to the blue moon often. Since, since we started hooking up together. Is that what this is? Gone home at the end of the semester. Thinking about it. What's it like? It's okay. I stay with my dad mostly. Westchester, Lawrenceson. Mm. It's gotta be beautiful in the fall. your mom. Think about her. I'm crying. No. I know. It's just there's not much there. Do you only hook up with your students? Yes. <laughs> no. Amanda and Sylvie just made love. Sylvie is one of Amanda's students. Therefore, Amanda sleeps with her students. Sylvie is a student of Amanda's. Amanda and Sylvie have slept together. Amanda was once married to a man. Therefore, yes and no. Furthermore, Sylvie is probing Amanda and or wants to know if Amanda dating other women. Amanda is not dating other women because she is really into Sylvie and but is afraid of saying anything for fear of scaring Sylvie off. In conclusion, Amanda and Sylvie want the other to be exclusive to them but don't want to say anything for fear of putting pressure to commit to a relationship still in its nascent state. To complicate matters further, Amanda feels her age might be an issue for Sylvie, so she plays it cool, but is terrified that Sylvie will grow bored of her and find someone her own age. Therefore, Amanda cries. You know, for a professor of logic, that has to be one of the most flawed arguments <laughs> I've ever heard. <laughs> Wittgenstein is turning over in his grave. Bertrand Russell has committed suicide in the afterlife. <laughs> Twice. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. So you are married? Uh. To a man. Mm, yep. What was that like? Functional. At best. And by? No. Interesting. <laughs> so. 
Amanda, tell us about your mother. My senior year of high school, my classmate and best friend, Rachel, and I would hang out. We used to go to movies, art galleries, museums. On the weekends, we'd take the train into the city and hang out in the village at independent bookstores. The Strand, to be exact. We'd go see matinees on Broadway if we could get cheap tickets. Bring in the noise, bring in the funk. The Tempest at Lincoln Center. And of course, Angels in America, parts one and two. We were inseparable. We used to shoplift at Urban Outfitters, anything we could fit under what we were wearing. So one afternoon at Bloomingdale's on the Upper East Side, we grabbed a whole bunch of clothes from the rack and asked a sales lady to help us get a room. And at first she was really hesitant. It's like she saw something pass between us. What? I don't know. But Rachel reassured her that we were sisters and that she needed me to help her pick out our prom dress. So we get in this room and Rachel starts trying on one outfit after another and I'm just sitting in this ugly brown leather chair watching. She was so beautiful. Funny, charming, elegant. I was mesmerized. She catching as she starts to dress and undress slowly. She's putting on show for me. And then the last outfit dropped to the floor. She's standing there in her bra and panties with a look in her eye that said, now what? And she came over to me. Right in that chair. I thought every cell in my body would explode. And then we heard this knocking at the door. We were busted. She got dressed so fast and we ran out of there laughing like lunatics. And that sales lady was so irked. <laughs> and then Rachel grabbed me and kissed me for what felt like an eternity in front of everybody. And then I grabbed her hand. We turned to leave. And I just froze. Standing right there was my God. Holy shit. Yeah. I was grounded for six weeks and forbidden to see Rachel for the rest of the summer. But you snuck out that very night for a rendezvous. No. <laughs> I did exactly as I was told. I mean, surely, you know. My mother, Dr. Freud, was a very formidable woman. But 
I dare not cross. And anyway, Rachel went to USC in California. I went to Dartmouth. A colleague of my mother set me up with her son. We got married right after graduation. And Rachel? We kept in touch for a while. But time passes and, and life happens. We just stop corresponding altogether. There, she's the head of animation for Warner Studios. I would have ran away and followed her. I know. You're more adventurous than I am. Because I like adventure. I can just imagine what you were like. 